Welcome everyone to our brand new Grand Tactician, the Civil War Confederate campaign. Uh, I am excited to be able to complete an entire campaign on the Confederate side. And so I just want to real quick show you where things stand as far as my starting uh, perks and all those sorts of things, policies, I guess you call them. First of all, we are going to give the uh, AI the plus 50 national morale bonus, which is going to make it very, very difficult to win the war. Uh, because we're going to have to take some northern territory and win a lot of uh, battles on the battlefield to do that. We're also going to make the aggressiveness of the AI very hard, which means he's going to be far more aggressive than the Union was historically, which means I'm going to be constantly on my heels. This should make for a very, very difficult challenge. We're going to probably need uh, European support to win. Uh, which is why I chose King Cotton as one of my starting three policies. All plantations will start the campaign with a higher upgrade level. Support in all slave states plus five. European intervention level plus 20, which I think is going to be key. We've also chosen Old Dominion, which uh, Virginia secedes from the Union. Uh, we moved the capital from Montgomery, Alabama to Richmond, Virginia. Confederate support in Virginia is plus 10. Uh, and union morale is minus five because of that. And then Southern industrialization. We will start the campaign with more railroad lines built and immigration from Europe increases population within the Confederacy by 25%. Should make for more available soldiers for me, but lowers unity due to religious unrest and resentment towards slavery within the immigrant population, reducing national morale by minus five. This policy is required for level three and level four industrialization policies and the abolition of slavery later in the campaign, which is something I expect that I will do when I get the chance. And that may be the thing that pushes us over the edge for European intervention. So let's go ahead and dive in. Here we go. All right, so we start February 23rd, 1861. Not a lot to do early on except decide on our initial policies. Uh, which in my case, uh, I'm going to immediately start focusing on the uh, Militia Act because I want to be able to get those three-year troops as quickly as possible. The other thing I'm going to do right away, now understanding that once the war starts, I'm going to get some additional fleets. I want to immediately start working on a brown water fleet for the Mississippi River. Uh, specifically to deal with the Union Navy coming down toward Vicksburg and dealing with New Orleans. So uh, we're actually going to go to the New Orleans port, which is a level two port. And we're going to put a squadron there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start queuing up some gunboats. Uh, timber clad gunboats are the best that we can do right now. They've got 12 guns and they should be pretty solid for what we want to do. So I'm going to queue up at least a few of those, maybe three to start. They're going to take some time to build, but while nothing else is going on and we're not building an army, we can at least be building those. All right, so we're getting a lot of notifications about things like the Fort Sumter situation, militia being formed, Kentucky wanting to remain neutral, stuff like that. Uh, of course, we're getting these uh, notifications. There's Texas joining the Confederacy. Uh, we get a monthly uh, economic report now, which is, is something nice. We, uh, we've got one new factory that was formed. Here's our total export volume uh, and imports, uh, the average corporate production, the state of our economy, things like that. Stocks are full of wood right now, which is good to know in terms of uh, queuing up a Navy. Uh, so it looks like, you know, in just like what, a week or so, we've already got a good start on some of these ships. Uh, and with the stocks of wood being full, I'm going to go ahead and keep on building these timber clad gunboats. I, I like the idea of having a bunch of those on the Mississippi River. All right, we've got our Militia Act 1. We can't do Militia Act 2 until the war actually starts. There's Lincoln being inaugurated. So uh, Military 1, I think will be good. Military 2 is where we can get to actually uh, have Army Corps, I don't know, maybe Diplomacy. That allows the importation of Enfield and Lauren's rifles, which would be key. All right, we're also going to queue up a fleet in Charleston. I'm planning on having a Confederate Navy, if at all possible. We obviously can't compete with the U.S. gun for gun and ship for ship. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and at least, uh, let's see, how about a 
couple of frigates. 58 gun frigates. Not steam frigates, just because they're a little more expensive. But uh, at least some regular frigates will get going here. We'll see how long those take to build. All right, so a little more history for you here. Uh, Alexander Stevens, Vice President of the Confederate States of America, gives his famous cornerstone address in which he clearly lays out the argument that the cornerstone on which the Confederate States are built, what they are founded on, is slavery. Uh, leaving no doubt whatsoever that the Confederacy, at least politically, was founded on the idea of preserving the institution of slavery. Now, what the rank-and-file Confederate soldier fought for, completely different story, as is often the case in a war. Uh, we are at toward the end of March now. Uh, we're almost there. We've got five days left on Diplomacy 1. Uh, this is where it's going to get interesting because we're not going to quite be at the place where we will have war yet. So we won't be able to do uh, the next militia act, which is really where I want to go. So I want to try and choose something that I guess everything's going to be 25 days no matter what. So uh, I guess we might have to go with something else in the meantime. All right, there's Diplomacy 1. It is March 29th. Uh, let's go ahead to our policies. Uh, it might be a good time to choose industrialization and eh, maybe agriculture. Oh boy, I'm, I'm torn on this one, where we want to go next. Our financial situation is pretty good right now. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do military for now. Let's Speaking of military, let's see where we are in our fleets. So our uh, brown water navy we're building down in New Orleans. Uh, these ships are m just about halfway there. Uh, our new squadron we're building... Uh, our Blue Water Navy, uh, three ships so far with a total of 140 guns, uh, are a little slower going, but at least we're getting there. Supply situation critical at Fort Sumter, so that whole situation is going to resolve itself in a war here very, very soon. It's April 7th, so we've got another week or so before that all goes down. And that's when we get all our military. Uh, we'll have our initial armies in the field and now start go ahead, going ahead. Once I get two-year troops, we'll start recruiting our uh, patron divisions that have been requested. And then once all those divisions are in place, we will start recruiting the patron uh, brigades. So uh, those will be taken in order uh, of when they were su uh, submitted to me. And uh, we'll try to meet your requests as best I can with that. Fort Sumter surrenders. So war should be coming here. It's going to be as soon as Lincoln issues his call for troops. There it is. Here's Alexander Stevens. Alright. Civil War. So here we go. So let's take a look now. Now we've got our initial armies, which we can see over here on the right. They're all pretty small to start. Uh, you know, 1,300 men here, 900 there. We've got 1,300 there, 649 men here, 2,000 in the Western Army, 2,000 in the Missouri State Guard. Uh, so now we have to wait for this military policy to complete in nine days. And we can, oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead, even though it's going to slow things down to do two at once, I'm going to go ahead and start Militia Act as well. One thing we can be doing uh, while we're waiting is work on supply depots with these small forces because uh, those are going to be key to being able to feed my armies so we're going to start building one there for the Missouri State Guard which is the only one that currently has a real supply issue at the moment but I'm sure there'll be others all right he's already got a squadron bombarding Fort Macon so one of the things I'm going to do right off the bat uh, is I'm going to start recruiting for my garrisons at least the ones that I'm most concerned about being in trouble. Uh, Norfolk's definitely going to be among those. So each one of these, uh, I'm going to throw a battery and at least one brigade. So those are going to be my initial recruiting units. Fort Macon's going to definitely get one. We'll look at some other key forts that I definitely want to do that for. St. Philip and Jackson are going to definitely be among those as well protecting New Orleans
Okay, we've got our Military One policy selected. M Militia Act is 16 days away. How is somebody, oh, somebody was wounded is already back. I'm not sure how they got wounded in the first place. But um, we're working on supplying our forts. I do have a fort, a uh, force way out here, the Western Army, that we're probably going to need to go up and deal with the Missouri State Guard. He moved his Department of the West out from St. Louis, and our Missouri State Guard just got the heck out of there. They didn't even wait around uh, to, to try and fight. So let's go to our Missouri State Guard, and I think we'll probably go ahead and uh, see these units are really, really small as it is. I think we'll go ahead and recruit a couple of units to start there just to give us something to kind of start with so we're not starting from scratch completely now we're gonna definitely need to go ahead and build a supply depot in their new location so the Department of Pennsylvania already made a move into the Shenandoah Valley so we're pulling our army of Shenandoah out of there I guess we're gonna have to start recruiting for those troops uh, Union has called for volunteers. They've got their 12-month contracts. We are five days away from our Militia Act where we can start getting two-year contracts and then I can start really recruiting my troops. But in the meantime, we may very well lose Winchester, which changed hands like 72 times during the war. So uh, it's not the first or last time that's going to happen. I'm trying to get them through there. I don't want to engage right now. Okay, we've got our Militia Act. It's May 21st. Uh, Diplomacy 2 will get us Enfield Musketoons. I don't think that's necessary right now. Government funding, I think, probably is. But now we can get our two-year troops. So uh, right now, 40,000 in the field for us, a little over 50,000 for him. We're going to be in the hundreds of thousands before it's all said and done. Uh, before I start recruiting, I want to take a look real quick at where our squadrons are. Uh, 41, 42% on our two new frigates. Uh, looks like our Brownwater Navy is complete. So that's some really good news. In fact, it's good enough news that I'm going to recruit, uh, I'm going to start building a couple more timberclad gunboats. I would eventually like to get the ironclads, but obviously those are not something I'm currently able to build. And I'm not sure where we get those. Um, this allows unarmored fourth, third, and second weight, second rates. Uh, where do we get ironclads is the question. All right, we've got our first two divisions recruited. Uh, so Will Broad Smith, we've got your division here in the Army, the newly christened Army of Northern Virginia under Robert E. Lee, which is only core strength right now, but eventually we can make real armies. Uh, and we've got the 5th Georgia Volunteer Infantry, the 1st Georgia Infantry, uh, the 32nd Georgia Artillery, and Bragg's Brigade, which is uh, the 5th uh, Georgia Cavalry, Georgia Hussars. And uh, then the Sexy Division under Longstreet with Gonzo's Gators, Task Force Troy, Virginia Legion, and Holly's Hurricanes. Uh, weapons are pretty scarce early on, uh, so especially artillery we're not able to do. So uh, Jeff wants for his uh, artillery to have either 20-pounder Parrots or 14-pounder Jameses, neither of which are currently available. We have 12-pounder Howitzers, 12-pounder field guns, and 6-pounder field guns, and that's it. Uh, we did have one set of 24 pounders which was actually what he requested for the 32nd Georgia artillery so we've got that in there uh, those are our first units requested we'll get to the other division requests before we're done with today's episode but I imagine we're gonna get into some combat before too long all right so our Mississippi River squadron uh, with 30 guns right now uh, let's go ahead down there and take a look at that in New Orleans I'm gonna go ahead and move them up i think all the way as far as memphis to help protect the mississippi river we might even go a little higher than that but at least we'll go as far as memphis for now let's look at our railroads for a second uh, we have some available railroads that we can build uh, which might come in handy depending on when and where they are we actually have the ability right now to build 
right here. I don't think that's necessarily the best idea, the Ohio, Pittsburgh, and Indianapolis, because I doubt we're going to continue to control that. Uh, the Houston and Shreveport, again, these are areas that I don't have a lot of need for rail capacity right now. This is one here that I would like to have, and it's going to require us to be able to move up and take Lexington. Uh, and then we can build that rail line, which is going to be really helpful if we depend if we depend on having Kentucky, which I think we're going to want to have at some point. Okay, so the Department of the West is moving toward our Missouri State Guard uh, at a pretty rapid pace, and he's got 11,000 men. So I, I think we're, we can expect to have some combat here in just a minute. And here it is. All right, so here's our first battle. Uh, June 4th, 1861 is going to take place in Springfield, Missouri. I think we can expect him to come right down this main road. So that's the crossing that I think I want to protect the best. He's going to be right in that area. I think we're just going to load our whole force down in around this crossing and take our chances. A lot of these units are really small. So I think I'm probably best to, to put my biggest brigades up here on the water to protect against any crossing that takes place. We'll put our artillery back here and then we'll wait and see what happens. All right, I think he's gonna get me here. Um, he looks like he's headed toward this crossing over here. So he's not gonna cross where I was expecting him to. I should have at least put a couple of brigades there. That was my mistake. An early mistake to start the war He's definitely crossing over there. I don't know how many men he's got. He seems to, at least in theory, outnumber me. I don't know if that's actually accurate or not. We're going to have to start moving. Let's get the guns up on the hill. See, our one of our biggest issues right now is the uh, the morale status of our troops. Seems to be pretty poor at the moment. We lost him. I can't even see him. That's probably because of the hill. Now let's get Gladden up on that hill. He's going for this other objective over here. I'm going to send Donaldson across over here. See if we can maybe draw him into an attack on that spot. Alright, we've got contact. Don't have any good weapons here. Whoa, slow down, guys. Let's get back over here. It's just some skirmishers we're facing right now. I really need to get these guys spread out though. There we go. up. I don't even know if these guys are firing. They may not be close enough. We're trying to get our guns up there. I'm going to go ahead and send these guys across right there. We're going to have to move up and try to engage him. We're going to send Donaldson's brigade right up in here. Oh, there, are, there's more coming. Okay. Kind of expected that. Send our army commander up to get him a little closer. Come on, move up and fire. You're just taking losses unnecessarily here. There we go. Alright, I'm going to bring Gladden's brigade right down in next to them. This is going to be interesting just because there's a lot of men right there. Let's see if we have a better understanding of what he's got. 11,000 is the estimate. Casualties pretty one-sided so far. In fact, we haven't killed a man among his. All right, Brian, your gun's firing. They are. Excellent. Let's get these other ones up there. 
Gladden's brigade's getting into position, though out of range. We don't have any decent weapons here. Oh boy. Okay. So we've got a problem here, and that is artillery firing right in our face. And because of it, we broke before we even had a chance to really do anything. You can't stand there in front of artillery like that and not expect to have that happen. That was my fault. I should have charged him into the guns sooner. This is really not a good situation. My army's not ready for this, I don't think. Now we're going to get fired on our flank. All right, he's pulling back. Good. Let's just turn right here. Hoping we can get Donaldson's brigade to rally. They only lost 49 men. All right, Slack's interesting to call them a division with 600 men. They're not going to last long before they break. All right, I'm just going to have these guys get into position right here. Oh, they're almost there anyway. Come on, recover. Recover and start firing. I'm mean, glad and start firing now. Oh boy, these guys are retreating right into the enemy. That's only going to get worse. Uh, this is a bad situation. The casualties are pretty even at the moment. But this is just going to get worse with Donaldson's Brigade. Slack's going to break before long. Gladden's doing alright. Yeah, this is this is bad. I'm not feeling great about this, and I, I almost feel like I'd rather just keep the army intact. Especially since now here come these guns again. 768 men, do I dare send them charging into these guns? I'm gonna have to. If that fails, we'll order a retreat, which we're about to do anyway. Alright, slack just broke. Them off. Yep, let's get out of here. Not a good start to the war, but it's early, so I'm not too worried about that right now. Long, long way to go. All right, so a little change we're making here. Uh, I've moved, uh, I've put Longstreet in command of a different division. Uh, because we actually had a specific request for Longstreet as a division commander from Shadow Trooper. Uh, so we're going to put them out in the Army of Tennessee since Shadow Trooper wants uh, his units to be Oklahoma and Texas units. Uh, we don't have enough to recruit from Oklahoma, so the 23rd Oklahoma Infantry uh, in their green uniform is going to have to be from Texas. First and second Texas battery. Uh, he wants 12-pound Napoleons. We don't have those available yet, but when we do, I will get them for you. Uh, same with the uh, Shadow Troopers, which he'd like to be uh, with Sharps Rifles. We don't have access to those yet, but when we do, I will get those for you. And for the unit that was originally under Longstreet, uh, I've gone ahead and switched them over. Uh, they're actually going to be under... Do we have Stonewall Jackson? Uh, I'm going to give them Stonewall Jackson if I can. Um, I might have already tried to create a brigade or a division for Jackson. Yeah, right here. Um, so we'll temporarily put that one under Samuel Cooper. I don't know why it keeps defaulting to garrisons. Uh, and we'll, we'll put Stonewall Jack in charge of the sexy division. All right, and in our Western Army, John Bell Hood's division, uh, the Western Legion with the Tucson Raider, or Rangers, the Santa Fe Irregulars, the Yuma Mounted Raiders and the El Paso Heavy Artillery, and we will get them heavy artillery as soon as we can. Right now they got six pounder field guns. We have no other type of artillery available to us right now, Eric, but I promise you we will get those. All right, and our next division uh, is gonna be for Aussie Striker. 
Uh, we've got the Victorian Mounted Rifles under Jeb Stewart, a full division of mounted troops in the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, and he requested khaki olive drab uniforms. This is the color that I found. It's called wheat on the game that seems to best, uh, seems to be the closest I could find to the khaki olive drab color. Um, so the first VMR, third VMR, fourth VMR, fifth VMR, eventually we'll get them better weapons. Right now, no other cavalry weapons are currently available. We've got two more divisions to get to. Uh, to complete all of our division requests for our Major General patrons, uh, but we're not quite in a place where we can recruit them yet. So we're going to have to wait for some more recruits to get into the kind of get into the queue here uh, before we're going to be able to do that. I want to look at the finances. Uh, we're going to go up a little bit on what we're spending on recruitment. I'm going to drop civil order spending because I don't think we need that right now. And I'm going to drop the trade war spending a little bit. I think we can probably drop politics for now too because I don't think we're at our max on policies. All right, this June of 1861, we're gonna move the Western Army uh, up and have them uh, get up on the other side of where the Missouri State Guard is. That's gonna be our primary force for dealing with the Department of the West who has about 13,000 men right now. Um, I think we just completed another policy feel like I want to go Militia Act 3, but I may wait. Military 2, uh, the Tariff Act, that'll hurt our relationship with Europeans. King Cotton 1 might be helpful. I think I'm going to go Industrialization 1, though. That's going to get us arming of civilian ships. All right, we've got 60,000 available volunteers now, uh, so we can recruit some more, although a lot of these states don't have enough on their own to constitute an entire unit so uh, we'll have to get a little creative with this but uh, it's time to create our next division so let's go ahead and do that all right we've got ourselves a fight but it's not a fight that looks incredibly promising but it's going to be in northern virginia uh, and it's going to be our still constituting army of northern virginia combined with our small army of shenandoah against the combined might of the army of northeastern virginia and the department of pennsylvania so we're outnumbered 26,000 to just 14,000 men. Uh, does he have 80 guns? And I've got 19. This could be a problem. This might be one of those situations where we might be better off to withdraw while we wait for reinforcements, especially artillery. But that would be that would mean surrendering Northern Virginia to the enemy, and I'm not sure I want to do that. So let's take our chances and see what happens. So the good news is that uh, we are going to be fighting a defensive battle, and all of the objectives are going to be right in this area. So if we assume he's going to come down Warrenton Turnpike and come at the Stone Bridge, I think we'll be okay. We're going to have to leave at least a couple of units up to cover the Sudley Springs route just in case. In fact, I may just put the whole of the Army of the Shenandoah up there when they arrive, which is in less than an hour, uh, and then just put Lee's Army down here the sexy division looks like they're pretty much all here uh, maybe not their artillery i don't think their artillery has arrived these divisions are still forming so that's just kind of the reality of the situation um so we'll put them there who do we have here these units are directly attached to uh to lee i guess okay so that's kind of how we're going to have to do this. And then just take our chances, pretty much. Okay, so Joe Johnston's going to arrive from the north, which is actually ideal, because that means he's going to arrive exactly where I need him to be with his 3,300 men to cover that northern approach at Sudley Church. We're trying to build some fortifications uh, to cover the crossings here as best I can. I think I'll do the same thing with Jones down here. We'll at least throw up some breastworks, give ourselves a little more protection. Since we're going to be outnumbered, going to need all the help we can get here. We're going to be largely fighting a defensive war because of the Union numbers that they have. I'm not going to make the mistakes that Lee did in invading the North prematurely before I've had a chance to really use attrition to my advantage. 
but we'll see. All right, Patterson has arrived, so now he's got his full force. And he'll be coming at me. I'm a little concerned about Poplar Ford right here. We might send this cavalry up there to cover that. Okay, we just spotted our first unit, and it's uh, a battery. We're going to get Stewart's 850 cavalry here, mounted up and across, and we're going to go try to deal with that battery before they can come up and start firing at us. But that makes me wonder if he's moving this way and not toward the stone bridge. Let's see if we can hit them before they can set up. Hit them quick. Don't give them a chance to set up. There we go. First combat. I'm gonna wipe out a battery. Nicely done, boys. All right, the infantry is coming down that same road. means we're going to have to shift our strategy here. We do have Yule's Brigade available to head up there and assist. We've got to get... I believe this is pronounced Yugi, even though it's spelled like Huger. We're going to get him out of there. Problem is he's so far out that it's going to take a while for those orders to register and he may end up running into keys first because he's still pursuing come on get out of there gotta get Joe Johnston over here more central somewhere so he can get those orders a little quicker okay so I'm sending Walker out here I'm gonna bring Jones up as well we're going to have to engage him where he is rather than let him come over at me where I'm weaker. So let's go ahead and get get Walker's cab up here. They've got mixed cavalry weapons, so they're going to have to get super close to actually be able to do anything. I'm going to bring Pendleton's Rock Bridge Artillery down. And I think we'll probably have to go ahead and bring Loring's brigade over too. And just concentrate our forces because we are outnumbered. Let's see what our estimate is on his forces now. 35,000. I don't think he's got that many, but boy, if he's got anything like 90 guns, that's going to be a huge nightmare. We've got Hampton's Legion here. I'm working on some fortifications for Yule's men. Springfield muskets. We don't have a lot of great weapons here at the moment. Yeah, his artillery is firing on me, so this is going to become a problem. All right, Virginia Legion, let's see what you can do for a few minutes here. Buy us some time. Really want to get up against this fence. We're letting him have the protection right now of the fence. All right, we're going to have to bring, I think we're going to have to bring the sexy division up, the balance of it, and try to take advantage of the opportunity we have on this flank over here really didn't want to have to go on the offensive like this but I don't have a choice Jeb Stewart doesn't have any of his men here yet all right how we doing Virginia Legion not great so far just a bad situation where they are I really need them to move up but I don't think they're gonna move up that close against the enemy we gotta get the help over there quickly This is most likely a battle I end up having to withdraw, but I'm hoping maybe I can surprise 
uh, bring some surprise to the situation. Is he firing? He is not. Let's get those guns across too. Alright, hopefully we can get some support up here for the Virginia Legion before too long. Gonzo's Gators. There we go. Get 3,000 Enfields firing. And we'll get the get Task Force Troy up here too. Start causing some problems for this brigade. Haven't lost a man yet, so Virginia Legion's taking it all right now, all the casualties. What's the situation look like now? So we're guess guesstimating 35,000 at this point, but the casualties are starting to look promising. If we can drive Burnside back by getting some withering fire into his flank. There we go. Yeah, buddy. All right, push up Gonzo's Gators, push up Task Force Troy. These guns firing. So Wade Hampton's going to come in here on the left up against this fence. We just drove off Burnside. This is what we need. We need to be able to take on a part of his army without taking on the whole thing. And if we can push this a little further, we could get a victory despite being heavily outnumbered. Our guns are out of range. We need to bring these guns up too. All right. We're driving them back. Let's drive back this cavalry now. How are we doing, Virginia Legion? Pretty good, pretty good. We asked a lot of them. Seems to be paying off. Once we drive off Palmer's Cab, I'll probably pull Walker out of the line and then shift everybody over. And I'm going to hold these guys right here, which hopefully means these guys stay put. We're going to have to be really, really smart as the Confederates if we're going to have a chance because we're going to be heavily outnumbered and outgunned in pretty much every battle. There we go. Okay. So now what we'll do is we'll bring this infantry, Gonto's Gators, up behind the fence. We'll shift Task Force Troy up to there. We'll bring DR Jones's brigade up into their right. We'll hold the guns where they are, let them fire, and then we're going to pull the Virginia Legion out of the line and put them out maybe on a flank somewhere, maybe up in between over here. For now, I'm just going to pull them back. And now we can get into Porter's flank. All right, he's shifting. He's finally reacting with the right side. He's going to shift his whole battle line. So we're going to shift Clayton over a little bit more. Pull DeRosey right up there. Pull Jones up a little further. And let's bring Walker's cavalry right there. Johnston, you can come up there. All right, so far so good. 500 casualties for me, 900 for him. That's about 3% on each side. But we hold all the objectives, and so the longer this takes, the more our score goes toward victory. Uh, I need Stuart to pull the heck back, because he doesn't even have any men yet. He's just kind of a division commander without a division roaming around. 
All right, good. Send two brigades to Poplar Fort. I dare you. We've got a strong position there. He may send more. There's Israel Richardson right here. All right, let's get uh, our walkers all ready. Dismounted. We're taking on Porter with... Uh, he's got some artillery back there. That concerns me. Move all we've got six pounder field guns. I need to break Porter and get at those guns. All right, he's sending four brigades over here now. There you go, Yule. Where is he headed? I don't know, but we broke Porter. Which means now we gotta hit the guns. Oh, we got the guns run off too. Perfect. And now he's pulling back. Beautiful. 1,800 men lost for him. Just 800 for me. That's right, run. All right, and with that, an unexpected but most welcome victory in Manassas Junction, June 17th to 18th, 1861, a full month before the historic battle that was fought near Manassas Junction. 800 casualties for us against a two to one odds. We inflict almost three to one casualties, a good first battle in the East. We're going to wrap it up right there. Uh, it's going to be a little while before you see the next episode of this or any other series as I'm off to Vicksburg in the morning. But uh, by the time you see this, I will have already been in Vicksburg for a couple of days. We'll see you when I get back. Thanks for watching.